season so far, and now it's the last and final round of the 2019 NGK F1 Powerboat Championship. And it's from Windsor, Colorado, a fantastic venue right on the edge of the Rockies. At an altitude of nearly 5,000 feet, it will have a huge impact on the way the boats drive. Now the roar of the Rockies Reloaded is a championship doubleheader. There are 300 points up for grabs to decide who will be the 2019 NGKF1 Powerboat champion. And the standings look like this going into the final round. Ashton Rinker has 1,174 points. Chris Fairchild on 1,155. Then it's Rusty Wyatt, Spencer Love, Chris Rinker, Johnny Fleming, RJ West and Jeremiah Mayo. Three APBA national champions will be crowned in Formula Lights, Trihulls and Formula One, which means the drivers are taking this season closer very seriously indeed. So it all comes down to this, high up in the Rockies, the championships will be decided, we're about to hit the water, make sure break, we'll be right back with all the action. NGKF1 Powerboat Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by TireRack.com, revolutionizing tire buying since 1979. By Motor Trend On Demand. Visit MotorTrendOnDemand.com. Start your free trial today. And by NGK Spark Plugs, the ignition specialists. Windsor, Colorado, where we've got every kind of horsepower you could ever need. And we've just crowned our first APBA champions. Let's take a look. Lots of other great racing action here at the 2019 Roar of the Rockies, Tim, including the final for the smaller Formula Lights. Well, this is also the APBA National Championships for the Formula Lights, and we had a great turnout with Mark Schmierbach, veteran, leading the way 
followed by Jason Williams from California and Hans McCulley. These boats look very similar to the bigger, more powerful F1 boats, and a champion was crowned. Congratulations to Mark Schmierbach. But now it's time for the big boys of Formula One and Heat 3. As we've heard already, this is a tricky course. There's no right-handers like Springfield, but there's plenty of other things to watch out for on this Rocky Mountain High course. Ralph and Tim, talk us through. Tim, as we take a look at our course guide here this weekend, there's going to be some real differences with the racing due to the high altitude. It is really going to throw these guys a curveball because not only are you almost at 5,000 feet, which takes off about 20% horsepower, but you also have less dense air, so the boat will not float on top of the water like it normally does. That's going to be different engine tuning. It's going to be different propeller selection. Here we go, and the race is underway. Heat three, Group A. Man, they all get off the beach great, all bunched up, heading to the first turn, and here we go. What a spectacular sight here in Windsor, Colorado. Just gorgeous, one of the most beautiful settings of the year. And everybody tries to funnel through that first corner. One boat getting kicked way wide. He sure did. Here comes 62 of Chris Fairchild up the inside, but Tracy Hawkins in the number two, he needs this. He is out front. The white 24 coming through this spray is Santa Rosa Valley, California, Spencer Love. But right now it's Tracy Hawkins leading the way in the Tunnel Enterprises machine, and he is looking good right now. He's got to take a tight line so he doesn't leave the door open for him. See them working on the outside, pirouetting around that buoy and back up the other way comes the number 20, Ashton Rinker, chasing the number nine of Johnny Fleming. Tracy's looking good as he comes down the back side of the course. White flag out, one more lap. Hawkins, one of the veterans on the tour, has had a bit of a rough season, hasn't he, Tim? He sure has. They have had all kinds of mechanical failures this year but it all seems to go out the window whenever you win. Checkered flag will fix a lot of ills, won't it? And he'll take the win here in Heat 3A. Here's a look at the results from that heat. Fairchild, Love, Rinker, and Fleming all chase Tracy Hawkins to the line. With Group A in the book, that means it's time for Heat 3, Group B, and that race ready to go. Here they come. Another fantastic start from all the competitors heading down to the first turn and they're bunching up. You see the gate to split the field there so it's safer. Now they're gonna tighten back up as they come to that first set of buoys and the battle for second is underway. Rusty Wyatt out of Ontario, Canada in the 94 and Manteca, California's RJ West in the 93. But they're all chasing that number 53 of Greg Foster that red carbon fiber Hoffman is a smaller boat. Oh, oh no. RJ picks up a buoy. That's a problem. That's going to be a one lap penalty, which is going to just ruin his heat race, but he's still got to try and get some points. The race is being red flagged, Tim. That means everybody comes to an immediate stop on the course. They sure do. They're going to get another chance at it. And here we go. Back under what? Foster out front again. And it looks like he's got Rusty right on his hip, but this smaller Hoffman of Foster's is purpose built for this lake. How much smaller is that boat compared to some of the others? It's about 18 inches smaller, which is huge when we're talking these numbers. Powering out of the corner and headed to the checkered flag and the win will go to the 53 of Greg Foster and that smaller boat, which worked beautifully on the lake here in Windsor. And John Jensen, number 29, first time back in the boat in 16 years since he got hurt. Congratulations, John, great finish. Great action so far, and coming up, three championships still to be decided. More to come from Colorado right after this. Welcome back to the 
NGK F1 Powerboat Series for 2019, the grand finale with three championships on the line, two of which are the J Hydros and the tri -Holes. Let's take a look. Been a lot of great activity on the lake here in Windsor this weekend. All the action brought to you by the folks at Water Valley Land Company and Island Lake Marine and Sports. And boy, the tri -Holes, Tim, they deliver great action once again. They sure do. First time ever running up here. The old man, Mr. Geritol himself, Jerry Rink, are winning the race. Yeah, but the kids were just as fast, weren't they? They sure were. They had a great time out here. All the Merrill coming through, just leading the pack and showing why he won the race. We got Jack Schubert second and Shane Butler third. Great event by the kids in the J Hydros. Well, 2019 has been another superb season of racing, but now it's the final NGK race of the year and the ABBA National Champion shootout. Here's Ralph Shaheen with a starting lineup. Well, let's take a look at our starting lineup for today's NGK Formula One Powerboat Championship race here in Colorado. Greg Foster, Ashton Rinker, the top two. Foster's finally on the pole. This is gonna give him the edge he needs to try and unseat the number 20. And let's not forget, there is a national championship at stake here today. There sure is. Everybody is really amped up for this race. It's a very technical course, so corner speed is key. Here we go, Ralph Shaheen, Tim Seabold with you as we get ready for the final race of the season. The roar of the Rockies reloaded. Chris Fairchild pulling away from the dock. Looks like Chris has got a Pretty good start, but look who's out front. Tracy Hawkins has been looking for a win this year. Maybe today is his. At the end of the straightaway, it's gonna be Ashton Rinker in the lead. He got a great jump over second place Foster. Oh, one boat with a big problem. The red flag coming out immediately. This race will come to a stop. Dylan Anderson goes over in the first turn. Looks like he got together with number 24, Spencer Love. I don't know if he couldn't see with all the spray or what, but it looks like he's okay. Yep, you can see he has come out of the hatch, signifying that he is all right. Safety crews are right there to help him. And you can see the other boat involved, Tim Kraft in the 15. Tracy Hawkins, you see the wood flying. And to your right, you can see the boat going over. It looks like they got together and he went over. Time for the restart now. Second start, let's see if Foster can get a better start this time. But it looks like Ashton got the jump on him again. Fairchild trying to pull away, gonna slot into second here in the early going. They're all bunched up, first, second, and third. Ashton Rinker, Chris Fairchild, and Greg Foster all dicing it out. Foster is in that red 53. There he oh, is right there, and they make contact with Fairchild. Comes together with Fairchild. They're all over the place. They're trying to get in position for that first lap. Here's a look at it again, Tim. Right on the right side of the screen, man. Wow, I don't know where Foster was going, but it was right into the side of Fairchild. Meanwhile, here's your leader out front. Ashton Rinker in the smooth water, and that's what you want to see when you're racing. Nobody in front of you. Picking your lane, airing it out. Battle for a second behind him with the 62 of Fairchild, and still right there, Foster in the 53. Then and then you got the 94 of Rusty Wyatt engaged in a fight as well. He's fighting it out with Chris Rinker, Ashton's teammate and cousin. This really narrows down as we come up the back straightaway and you get into turns three and four, you see how it really gets tight. It's almost a one pin turn and the water's coming off that sea wall. In this group here is Ashton Rinker in that number 20 along with Greg Foster. Oh. And we got problems again over here. Chris put it up on its side. Chris Rinker, number 52. And RJ West gets around him, almost hits him, but they both made it through the corner okay. Chris almost goes over, but saves wow. it somehow. I don't know if he saved it or it just saved itself. Sometimes the waves will bite you and sometimes they'll help you. Yeah, that's right. Here's Fairchild in the 62. 
you know, this corner is really playing havoc on these guys, and that's definitely a passing area. Some guys are making it through, some aren't. Ashton comes up on a back marker, Travis Yates, and can't get through the hole. Has to shut it down. Brinker, Fairchild, Foster is still running in the top three as you get a good look from high above this race course in Colorado. Sure is a beautiful setting right again. Oh, oh, and another boat going over that corner, just treacherous today. Oh man, Travis Yates does a 360, lands upright. Travis trying to stay ahead so he doesn't get lapped by Ashton and puts it over. There's a seawall right there just to the left of our screen, and it's really kicking the waves back at him, isn't oh, it? Oh, man, it's making it rough and unpredictable, so you can't read the water when you're coming in there. Chris Rinker's got his cowling off, too. There's melee all over the place. Travis is all right. It's a wild one here in Windsor, Colorado, for sure. We'll be right back for more of the NGK F1 Powerboat Championship. NGK F1 Powerboat Championship on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by NGK Spark Plugs, the ignition specialists. As we get ready to go back to racing, Tim, it's going to be a pace boat start. It sure is. And now Ashton has Greg Foster, number 53, right on his outside. So it's another opportunity for Foster. Here we go. Coming down the shine. Green flag. Here we roll. Looks like they're pretty even going into the corner. Tracy Hawkins gets a great jump on the field. Coming up the inside. And that battle for third is a good one with Fairchild and Wyatt. Fairchild in the silver boat on the inside. And right behind them, you got the battle with Spencer Love and Jeremiah Mayo, followed by Tracy Hawkins, Johnny Fleming, and Mike Makis. Now that's a great three boat battle for seventh as we watch the leader, Rinker, rounding another buoy. They're still trying to jockey for position to find out where they can pick up on the guy in front of them, inside or outside. Rinker still with that smooth water for now, Tim. He does, but you know, the great thing about this course is you don't have to run in lane one to have a fast lap time. You can get out in lane three or four and still run a great lap time. Lane one closest to the boot. Lane one closest to the pin, and that is the shortest way around the course, and that's how Ashton's going right now. On board with Johnny Fleming, the driver out of the woodlands in Texas. He's in the middle of a battle right now for seventh place. Let's see if he can come through. That's a good look at what you were talking about, the lack of air getting under the boat here. You sure, you, you see the boat just porpoising slightly, and that's because it can't get enough air underneath it. RJ West giving us this view. White flag is out, just one to go here in the season finale at the Roar of the Rockies Reloaded. Everything on the line for the APBA National Championship and the series title. Rinker has put together a tremendous season, and Ashton is one lap away from claiming the crown. He is, and Greg Foster is running a strong second with Fairchild in third, number 62, but they just don't have enough to get up to the number 20. Here he comes. Ashton Rinker will win again in 2019, and he'll claim the championship back-to-back -back championships for the Rinker Boat Worlds. Boat, Greg Foster comes in second. What a great finish. Celebration is underway. Boy, with the season they have, they deserve it. Fantastic. Won all of our events this year. Tracy Hawkins gives them a little spray down. And here's a look at the final results for today's event. Rinker, Foster, Fairchild, Wyatt and Jeremiah May on the top five. Now let's hear from the champ.
So, confirmation of the weekend results. Ashton and Rinker with 286 points, ahead of Greg Foster with 284. Chris Fairchild third with 264. And then Rusty Wyatt, 244. Jeremiah Mayo, Spencer Love, Mike Makers, and Johnny Fleming on 204. And that means after five rounds of racing, Ashton Rinker out on top with 1,460 points. Chris Fairchild is the runner-up. Rusty Wyatt is third. Spencer Love fourth. Then Chris Rinker, Johnny Fleming, Jeremiah Mayo, and Mike Makers in eighth place. Shaheen, Tim Seabold, and our entire crew. I'm Jonathan Green. This has been a production of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. <laughs>